What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video today, and in this video we are doing the sixth installment of Retro Reviews. Today we're going to be taking a look at my Gemini Jets 1-400 scale American Airlines Boeing 747-100. Bringing back an old series of mine once again. I know I brought it back for like two episodes at the start of last year in 2022, and then that didn't really last long. But I'm here to bring it back since I got some extra time on my hands now that I am in my summer break. So to talk about this particular model that I have in my collection, I picked this up around Christmas of 2013, I believe it was, because this model was released in February of that same year in that particular set. So this is quite an old model that I have in my collection, and because of that, it is one of the models where it has sustained a little bit of damage over time. Uh, one of the main bits of damage that I do want to point out is that the uh, antennas here on the tip of the wings have been bent. So a little unfortunate that that happened, but with the model being around in my collection for about a decade at this point, uh, for the fact that it's still in one piece and everything is pretty astonishing to me because some other models that I've had for a similar period of time have not really fared as well. Um, that's not to say all of them are broken, but a few unfortunately did go broke. Taking a good look here at the box, this box has definitely seen better days, I will say that. It is a little dusty because obviously it's been sitting on my shelf getting no use for extended periods of time, so it is quite dusty. And what I mean by when it's seen better days, yeah, this box is definitely, uh, this could use an entire new box because the whole right side of the, uh, the cutout is missing, this, so this flap won't really close up anymore. I'm missing the top half of the plastic cradle as well, so the clear top. Um, but otherwise, the uh, pamphlet here with all the aircraft information remains in good condition. So feel free to pause it as you wish if you want to read all of this information. And here is the bottom half as well if you want to see the aircraft specifications. And then we'll go ahead and flip over to the back of the box. You can see there 2013 release, which is kind of early um, for February, because usually nowadays with February released models, uh, they still have the previous year's copyright date on it. So I'm um, guessing production has definitely changed over time as we've gone through the years. But this is just your standard Gemini Jets box, nothing out of the ordinary, but I do like the American Airlines officially licensed product. And this was before the uh, new livery came out for American. I believe it came out sometime in the summer or fall of 2013. It was whenever the U.S. Airways merger was announced that they sort of introduced that new branding. It was right about that same time when the new branding came around. So this is a pretty nice model, and I'm looking forward to reviewing this. Let's get that dusty old box out of the way. And let's go ahead and take a look at the model itself. Here's the front section of the aircraft. So starting up here at the nose, you got a bit of a different color there on the nose cone. So you see it's like a light gray color compared to the polished belly. So you see that right there. But otherwise, the red, white, and blue um, cheat line still goes across the entire uh, no section here, so I'm going to zoom out on that just a little bit if the camera will focus, but you can get a good look there at the um, landing lights, but there you go. So looks like a little bit of a paint chip there, but again, for a model that's been in my collection for 10 years, the fact that it's in one piece is still pretty astonishing. And then here's the other side just for fun as well. You see the um, baggage door just underneath the cheat line. And then I'll flip back over to the uh, port side of the aircraft, the left-hand side, and then we'll do our traditional review. So then obviously you got the passenger windows up there, your cockpit windows are up here, and then the iconic three windows up at the top, which is what all 747-100s had. There was a um, upgrade that you could get for the 747-100s that would add the uh, 10 windows on each side. And I believe with the 747-200, that was the standard um, for that particular type. But the 747-100s are usually identifiable by the three windows on each side. So you got six windows in total up there because up in the hump area, they used to have like big lounge lounges and stuff before you had the more traditional business class or first class products being introduced that sort of um, phased out the lounge areas up on the top. But that was kind of the norm back in the 1970s. Obviously, you've got the 747 luxury liner titles just underneath the cheat line. And then you have 974 as your fleet number there on the nose gear doors and obviously the nose gear as well. All the wheels do roll on this particular model and all of them are still there. Move towards the back, you got the um, landing lights there on the wings, and then obviously the wing seam, which for a 2013 model, this is pretty acceptable, I would say. Um, you can't obviously polish this. I think, I don't know why they don't polish this, but I believe it probably has something to do with just the logistics of the uh, cradle there. And then we'll move over towards the wing section 
of the aircraft, so you got the extra doors there up on top. Uh, no overwing exit markings on this particular aircraft, so you can see that they are just pretty blank on the wings. And then onto the tail section where it's pretty bare bones, but your standard American Airlines stuff. So if you are an American enthusiast, you'll recognize this pretty well. So the cheat line ends right here, just past the uh, rear boarding door. November 9674 is the registration. I'll talk more about this particular airframe in a couple minutes. And then the iconic American Airlines logo on the tail and then the American flag up on top. And then on the other side, it will be pretty much the same, but I'll just show that just for grins and giggles. But you know, the only difference here really is the fact that you do have the extra um, luggage doors uh, to load a luggage underneath the um, cabin area. So you have all that, all those applicable details. Everything looks fantastic on this model. And then flip it underneath again. Here's just another look at the underneath of the model. Again, all polished. So this is a very, very much a fingerprint magnet. I had to uh, use a microfiber cloth to wash it off or not wash it off, but just to kind of clean it up and remove any smudges and fingerprints that I've gotten on this model because it has collected a lot over the years. And obviously the iconic uh, Pratt & Whitney engines on here, which are perfectly crafted on this particular model. And then obviously the landing gear, which all the wheels do uh, tilt, um, at least the ones that are supposed to tilt, uh, they will. And then they obviously move as well there with the center wheels. And then the stand hole, all your other details, pretty much everything is in place. So what about this particular airframe, November 9 or 6, 7, 4? So this particular airframe was delivered to American Airlines in May of 1971, would operate with American for 12 years before it was transferred over to Pan Am in December of 1983. Then it went to Tower Air in March of 1987 um, on sort of a lease as it went back to Pan Am the next month, so in April. And then it went over to UPS, so it was converted into a freighter by March of 1992. And then it went over to Polar Air Cargo in October of 1995. Now with the registration, it did keep its November 9 or 674 uh, registration up until it went to Polar Air Cargo, where it was then re-registered as November 859 or Foxtrot Tango. Unfortunately, this aircraft has since been scrapped. Another detail I do want to mention as well for Pan Am was when it was with them, it was named Clipper Beacon Light. So if anybody uh, that views my channel has flown on Pan Am, and if you've flown on a particular airframe, let me know because I'd like to hear about it. I always love the Pan Am Clipper name, so I'll have to find some more Pan Am stuff to uh, take a look at because as of right now, I only have that um, 737-200 in my collection. So when I get more of them, I'll be very happy about that. But yeah, that'll do it for this retro review. Again, I the box is just a complete mess because it has been torn to pieces over the years. So um, I can't really show that, unfortunately. So I just have to look at just the model alone. But yeah, really glad to bring back the retro reviews uh, series on my channel. This will, again, probably be just a temporary thing. So just through the summer months, at least. So for this month and then June and then July and then probably do one in August before I go back to college. And then probably after that, I don't think I'm probably going to do any retro reviews as I probably won't have much time to do other content outside of obviously the weekly airport updates, even if I have time for those, because I'm planning on doing some other stuff up in college as well, starting in the fall. And then just some other uh, stuff as well. So that will affect the schedule. But again, I'll, I'll try to talk more about that in my channel update video, which will come out in June, right about the start of June on that first day. So with that being said, that is the end of the video. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.